So glad to see everyone here tonight in for Bible studies. So glad to see Sister Jade. So happy to see you. Miss you. I'm glad that you are going to be free on, on Wednesdays now. So I'm so glad. And also on Sundays too. So we are, we are very glad and very happy that you were able to make it. Amen. Amen. We have been studying the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. How many of you love Jesus? How many of you really do love Jesus for real though? I mean, how many of you are really willing to die for Jesus? I mean, for real. Not to die for you. I mean, for real. If you are told that if you go there, they're going to cut your neck off. And you have five kids waiting in the house. Will you take a chance? If God doesn't make sure, will you take a chance? Amen. This is very important. How about if God, just like the three Hebrew children says, if God doesn't even show up, I'm not going to bow down to the devil. Amen. See, it comes to a place in our lives that we make up our mind if we're going to serve this God or not. See, we serve a God that loves us, a God that is so faithful to us, a God that cares about us, a God that says that the proof that we love him is that we keep his word. The only proof that you truly love God is that you keep his word. Jesus Christ said that if you love me, you would keep my commandments. Now, the sermon on the mount is the greatest sermon that is preached by anyone who have ever lived on the surface of this earth. Like I shared with you when we started uh, chapter 5 of the book of Matthew, that a lot of people discount this sermon on the mount saying it was only told to the disciples. As I have been studying this book of Matthew, together with you, we are studying this together. I'm not just coming to teach you, I am studying the book of Matthew. And what did I realize in my own life that if by the grace of God I am able with God's grace to live according to the words of Jesus that my life would be all that God wants my life to be. Because Jesus Christ has given us some nuggets of truth. He preached this message. This is the very first message he preached. And he gave us some we call it eight beatitudes. Is it eight or nine? Eight beatitudes. Telling us what we as believers have to live by. Telling us what really matters. Telling us the importance of following him and living life according to his word. We started in Matthew chapter 5 and we read verse 3 and he said happy blessed are those that are poor in spirit for they for theirs is the kingdom of God and then last week we read verse 4 and what does verse 4 say blessed are those that mourn for they shall, for they shall do what? For they shall do what? Conquer? Oh, comforted. Yes, yes, comforted. So we talked about those that pour in the spirit. Last week, we, are, we spoke about those that mourn. And today is verse 5. Say, happy or blessed are those that are meek. For they, for, their, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those that are meek, for they shall inherit the earth. See, Jesus Christ is bringing a message that is contrary to the teaching of his time, and even our time. 
poor in the spirit, not rich in the spirit, M mourning, not laughter, and now meekness, and not puffiness. Directly opposite of what our society detects to us. Our society makes us to believe that we need to, you know, to, to, to really prove ourselves. Stand by our ground. Stand by what you know, we believe is right for us. Stand your ground and, and, and stand by your right. But this is a different message Jesus is teaching now. Completely opposite. It is not a message of you right, so you got to stand your ground and, and stand what you believe in terms of this is what is due you. You have the right of way. And if you are driving this way and they're coming this way, you just keep on going. Because if they hit you, they are fought. This is different now. Jesus is saying, if you are going this way, even though you are right, and they're trying to hit you, stop and let them go. Did I just talk to somebody here right now? It is not about your right. It's about his right. But let us first of all start. I started by telling you that if I, as your pastor and you, would really put this word of Christ into our life and practice it, our life would be so different. Your own life, you would live such a happy life. Now, there is a progression in this. And let me go through the progression. Then I will go back to explain to you what it really means to be meek. He says, blessed are those that are poor in the spirit. Those who are, who are bankrupt. Those who see themselves that really, they can't help themselves. Those who look at themselves and know that within themselves, there is nothing. They are poor. Blessed are those who are poor in the spirit. And because they are poor in the spirit, and they see their sin, they see their helplessness, they mourn, they cry, they weep, they lament over the wrong, they lament over their life, over their struggles, over not really living up to the standard that God wants them to live to. There is no one here today that should point any finger at anybody. Why? Because you have not met up the standard that God has set for you. And I'm saying this because in spirit temper, I want us to be a church that Christ said, God, help me. Not like the Pharisees that says, you know, look at him, look at her. She does it, she does it, she does it. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. No, 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 no. The Bible says, unless you see yourself as poor in the spirit and mourn over your state of poverty, you never inherit the kingdom of God. Instead of you looking at your brother, who is doing something that you think is wrong, of course, in your sight, look at yourself and cry before God and seek the grace of God to help you. Now, this is the progression. You pour in the spirit. And because you pour in the spirit, you know you need the help of God. And you are crying. You say, God, you are mourning over my sin. We explained last week that the word mourning, crying, being sad, is not sadness over what went wrong in your life. It is not sadness because you lost your job. It is not sadness because you got caught in the things that you were doing secretly. I don't know if you have been ever sad before because they were caught. And you wish they didn't catch you, but they just caught you. Oh my God. We all, most of us have been. I'm not sure if some of us, I have been. Most of us have been caught. Oh my goodness. They caught me now. Taking the piece of meat from the soup. Like, who, who did it now? Your hand have the soup and your mouth. Oh my, you have the meat. You can't swallow it. It's too big. So now you caught. Now you caught. You're feeling sad. Oh my God. Mama caught me. Not, not that kind of sadness. Not that kind of mourning. It's mourning and being sad over your state of helplessness. 
Now, when I go to, you've been sad. You sat over your state of helplessness. The next stage is I happy are those who are meek, humble, humility, seeing themselves that they need help. Humble because of seeing themselves, comparing themselves or standing before a holy God. So they humble themselves. They are not proud. They put themselves down because they serve a God who is too holy to look at sin. Too holy to look at unrighteousness. Too holy to look at filthiness. So one, you pour in the spirit. You see yourself that you are bankrupt. Then you cry over, you mourn over the life of sin and the struggles that you are in for many people and even even most people struggle. They, they say things they should not say. They look what they should not look. Sin is not what most of you can't have seen. Sin is any time you miss the mark, it is sin. So don't you tell me, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't look, go after men or after women. No, no. It's more, but whoever that knoweth what is good and doeth it not, it is sin. That means you know it is wrong for, for to see a trash there and you don't pick the trash up, you've just messed up. You know it is wrong to have this thing fall down like this. You're supposed to, just like that. Supposed to pick it up. I don't care. I didn't do it. It is sin because you know it's right to do. So the Bible says, whoever that knows what is right to do and does not do it is sin. So sin is not only those major things. You know, I don't do the wrong things. I don't chew. I don't do that. And I don't. No, no, no. Forget about all that nonsense. Okay. When God looks at you, just look at yourself. Like someone who always need God. It is that sense of needing God, the Bible says in verse 5. Let us go to verse 6. So you can, we'll just go to the progression, then we'll go back to meekness. Uh, we are in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Matthew 5, verse 6. We are doing verse 5, but let's go to verse 6. I'll show you a progression of how Jesus is progressively teaching us Matthew chapter 5. Are you there yet? Okay. So verse 3 said, Blessed are the poor. So you are poor in the spirit. You see your state of helplessness. You see that you are struggling, not because you are chewing, smoking, whatever it is that people do, and not that, because you know that you get angry when you should not be angry. You give somebody a bad look when you should not. You, you hiss at them when you should not. You refuse to love somebody when you should have loved them. You refuse to give a seat for someone. If many things. You, 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 you see yourself higher than somebody else. The Bible says we should consider others better than us. But you think you are better than the next person. That is equally sin. So when we talk of sin, sin is missing the mark. So when you list what sin could be, you say, you know what, God, I depend on you every time. Are you getting this? Are you all getting this? I know this is a real serious message here because I know, I know that uh, many people will just brush through this sermon quickly and not go depth into it. We are going in depth in this sermon on demand because there's a lot of things to, to learn there. Then verse 4, blessed are those that mourn. So you are mourning over the sin, your life of struggle, not doing what you're supposed to do, not singing what you're supposed to sing, not praising God when you should praise God, complaining. Those are sin. Murmuring and complaining. Oh God, look at my shoe. I'm supposed to buy two by now. God, I'm still single. What me about me? Oh God, I didn't have it. These are all bad. God doesn't like that. God, look at this. I have been faithful to you all these years and, and just are complaining. God himself does not like that. Oh God, you blessed brother John. You didn't bless me yet. What's up with you, God? That's still questioning God unnecessarily. So sin is not just an art. It can also be an, what you're supposed to do that you did not do. So when you look at your life and see that, it, it puts you in a place of always needing the help of God. Say with me, God help me. See, when we all have that attitude, guess what? You will love each other. 
You will not look down on anyone because of their struggles. You will pray for them and pray that God helps them because you yourself have struggles. Some of them you don't want to go to bed at night. You eat too much. That's part of a problem too. So, but yes, Bible says anything you do in excess is sin. The Bible say that. Gluttony is sin. Giving a bad look is sin. I mean, not if you know how to give a bad look. A bad eye. I know many people do. Mostly, the women do it the most or men do it too? Women the most. You know, they just, they just roll their eyes at you and they know something is wrong here. And you, you, refuse, to, you refuse to greet somebody because you're mad at them. I need you. You need me. No, this one here, I'm not hugging that one. This one here, I don't know. <laughs> and you know it. You know what you're doing. I know you don't. Maybe you, uh, you, I'm glad you, you're honest about that. That one there, I'm not going to hug her because last night she was not nice to me. I couldn't say I love you when I know I don't love you. So I can't say to you, I'm going to go to Sister Myra because I know I love Sister Myra. <laughs> and these things are behind in the sight of God. See, when God looks at us acting like that, he, he just says, my God, why? What's wrong with my children? He wants us to really be all that he wants us to be. Loving, caring, just kind to one another. And just forgiving one another. Instant forgiveness. Letting go instantly. Not holding on to stuff. Not holding on to offenses that people have, have done. Just let go and just move on with life. Amen? Amen. So now, you mourn over this in them, verse 5. Then you are meek, humble, because you look at the holiness of God. You look at the righteousness of God compared to yourself, then you now, you are meek. Getting it? Now, verse 6. Because you see God is so holy, and now you are humble and meek, you begin to get hungry, and you begin to thirst, after being like God, righteousness. See? You begin to thirst after righteousness because now you see yourself compared to God. You are nowhere to be. God is holy. You are not holy. So you humble yourself before God and you begin to thirst and hunger after righteousness. And because of the righteousness of God for your life, because of, because of your hunger for God, in your life, you begin to have mercy towards all the people because of how God has had mercy on you. And then the next verse talks about being pure in heart. And because of your hunger and thirst for the righteousness of God, guess what happens to your heart? Your heart begins to be pure. Your heart begins to be pure. And when your heart begins to be pure, you know what happens to you? <clears throat> you begin to be a peacemaker. Because now you, you are thinking right, you're acting right, you're living right. So you want to make peace among people. You are no more causing trouble. There are people who are known to be causing trouble. And I thank God without them in this church. They will tell Sister A what Sister B said so they can hit their heads together. You know people do that? Those are troublemakers. If you know one, let me know. And I will, I will deal with them. I probably can't even deal with them. God will deal with them. See, but we are all, we're called to be peacemakers. And then when you become a peacemaker, one thing, people to be peaceful with each other, guess what? The word begin to persecute you in verse 10. They're persecuting you for righteousness sake. Because you are living the righteous life that God wants you to live. You start being persecuted for righteousness sake. And the Bible says in verse 11, when Men begin to revive you and prosecute you and falsely accuse you. You should be happy because your reward, great is your reward in heaven. Because they did the same thing to the prophets that were before you. So when you go all the way back, it all begins with poverty of the spirit. It all begins with seeing yourself that you need God. So when you know that you need God, guess where you're going to be every Wednesday? In church. Because you know your need. You know what you need. You know what you really need. You need God. You need more of God in your life. 
So you're not going to stay home and watch football. You're not going to stay home and say, you know, I want to just stay home today. I'm, you know, Mark chapter 5, verse 5. I know it already. Blessed are the meek, for they shall hear. I know that. I'm meek. I, I don't have to know more about meekness. I know what meekness is all about. I mean, I learned it when I was in kindergarten. I am meek. Now let me tell you. Going back to verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now what exactly is the meek? The dictionary defines meekness incorrectly. Dictionary defines meekness differently from what the Bible means meekness is. Dictionary says meekness is more or less being a coward. Meekness is more or less being a coward. No, meekness has nothing to do with being a coward. Meekness, on the other hand, has to do with humility, gentleness. Everyone say gentleness. Say humbleness. Say meekness. So the Bible says that blessed are those who are humble before God. When you are humble before God, the humility will show within you. It would be expressed even in everything that you do. God wants us to be humble. Let me give you some, some example of humility, of, 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 of meekness. When the Bible says Jesus was meek, the Bible says there is no man that have lived on this earth, that was before Jesus, that was as meek as Moses. So Moses was meek. Now let's look at an example of Jesus. Jesus was meek. But yet, you know what Jesus did to some of these, to those guys that were changing money in the temple? What did Jesus do? What did Jesus do? He threw them out. It, I, know, I would like you to, 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 to do that dance one. I'm sure you would do it well. He turned the table around and kicked, kicked them out of the place, right? But Jesus was meek. Now, so that tells, let me just let me tell you what that means. So meekness basically is anger over anything that God does it not like. It's not about you. Meekness is has to do with God. Meekness is about God, not about you. So you don't have the right to be mad. No. You have the right to be mad when somebody does something against the Almighty God. You have no right to be mad because somebody did something against you. I know this is a different teaching, but that's what Jesus was saying here. Jesus even said we should prefer others. That is part of meekness. Prefer others before you. That is meekness. Let somebody sit down while you stand up. That is meekness. Give somebody, if somebody tells you to go a mile, go two miles, that's meekness. Is that a tough teaching? Yes. But is that what Jesus wants us to do? Yes. Is that easy to do with his help? Yes. With your strength, is that easy? No. But the Bible says when you are meek, there is a reward for that. Let me give you an example in the Old Testament of meekness. Many of you know the story uh, of, of Abraham. Abraham was, uh, was from the land of, uh, of the Chaldeans, or present day Iran, Iran. And God called Abraham to come out of his kindred, out of his mother, father, everybody, and, and follow him. He's going to show him a land, you know, we're going to bless him. But for Abraham, you know, took his nephew what's his nephew's name what's abraham's nephew's name lot everyone say lot say it again say it one more time say abraham's nephew's name is lot get that that's good so he took lot with him god blessed abraham god also blessed lot so abraham's have a lot of tattoos and Lot also have a lot of cattle. Now the servants of Lot and the servant of Abraham begin to headbutt each other because 
because guess what? They just can't work together because the cattle will be going back and forth. The cattle will eat the grain here and they will go this way and just be going back and forth. And there was a fight between Lot servants and Abraham's servants. And Lot was upset. And Lot brought the case before Abraham. Abraham was a meek man. You know what Abraham said? Lot, no stress. Everyone say, no stress. We have two parts here. Pick any one you want. If you pick left, I will go right. If you pick right, I will go left. But mind you, right side was very fertile. The right side have maybe have some streams and it can produce grass very quickly. The left is dry. It doesn't do much. You know, a lot generally would pick the good side. So Lord pick the best side. And Abraham said, that's fine. If that's what you want, that's fine. And Abraham picked, of course, he didn't pick. He just, just to take whatever Lord did not pick. Now, that is meekness. Abraham could have said, wait a minute, I brought you here. Lord, I brought you here. So you take the bad side and I take the good side. But Abraham didn't do that. Abraham said, you pick one side. Any side you choose, I will go with the other side. See, because God can bless you regardless of where anyone picks. Amen? The Bible says, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. The Bible said, the, the, the earth is, the, is of the Lord." And everything that is in it belongs to God. So the place that was not good before God can turn it around to become good for you. Amen? So this teaching I know is not common, but that is the way to live as Christian. When you are, the, you know, when you are at a point in your life where you don't, I know this may sound strange to some of you, just don't stress yourself out. Because if God is for you, who can be against you? Who can be against you? If God is going to bless you, it doesn't matter if you are in Chicago or in Hong Kong, God will bless you at the time he was meant to bless you, as long as you remain in his will. Amen? Amen? So, but you have to really understand the level of meekness. Meekness, basically, seeing God, saying, oh, God, whatever pleases you, that's what I will do. Not about what pleases me. Not about, oh, this is my right. I have the right of way, so I'm going to just keep on doing my thing. I don't care. This is, this is my right. That is very common in America, right? This is my... It's my it's my right. So it means I've got no right. Except God. And if you live life like that, you are living according to what Jesus is talking about here. His sermon on the mount. So Jesus expects us not to live like the people of the world. He expects us to live like the kingdom of when you say, I'm too blessed to be stressed, it's because you refuse to fight when the devil wants you to fight. You don't get into the ring with the devil because there is no point. It's to drag you into argument. I'm not even going there. There's no point. Just humility is the key. There is no point. Many homes have been broken because of lack of humility. Lack of meekness. Relationships have been messed up because of lack of meekness. Nobody is willing to say, you know what? You just have your way and I'm fine where I am. God is going to bless me regardless. He may not come true to me this month, maybe not even this year, but I know the God I serve will make a way for me. You may laugh at me now that you took advantage of me. No stress. God will come true for me. And when God comes true for me, everything I lost 
because of what you did to me in the last three years, God is going to double it. Double or double for your trouble. Everything, the canker worm and everything, everything that you have lost, God will replace them. Double for your trouble. Everyone say double. double. For your trouble. And that is when you really apply the word of God. When you are upset as a child of God is because a violation of God's word. But not because somebody did something wrong to you. And what I'm teaching you tonight is not, I'm not just teaching you this because that's what, it's just, that's what I read. But I live that life also. And that's why I say you are too blessed to be stressed because... I can go to bed sound and well and nothing would bother me. And my wife would tell you, I don't even care what's happening around me. I'm still just peaceful about it. it was, people will ask me, are you human? Of course I'm human, but I'm not. Should I go and kill myself? I kill myself for. I have prayed. I trust God and I'll leave it in his hand. I have prayed with, I truly believe God. I prayed with faith and I trusted God. And if it doesn't work out, so what? Will I go and, I will still keep serving God and know at the right time. Because the Bible says there is time for everything. Don't help God. God knows how to help himself. Amen? Just be meek. The Bible says, blessed are the meek, for they shall do what? They shall do what? Now, list me some things that you, you will like on this earth. Tell me some stuff you like on this earth. Some good stuff you like on this earth. Some good things you like on this earth. Be honest. Money. I don't know if you like money. I don't know if you do not like money. You wish you don't have it. Not love. Not love of money. See, love of money is different. Love of money is when money controls your life. An example of that, my personal life, I learned so well many years ago. I said, God, I thank you that now I know that money doesn't control me. Because you would not know about that until you are in a position where you have to choose money or God. <laughs> See, when you have to choose money or God, say, you know what? Hmm, my gosh, I'm going to just go with this money. God understand. No, money have just taken over you. That is the love of money. Amen? So money should not, so there's nothing wrong with money, okay? Money is just a tool. Money is a tool. I will teach that when God permits me to teach that. But money is just a tool. Money is neither good or bad. It depends on which hands it falls into. If money gets in the hand of a drug dealer, we are in trouble. If money gets in the hands of a good man, we are blessed. If money gets in the hand of a, of a child, uh, pretty fair, pretty fair, molester, we are in trouble. Or money get in hand of a monster, you can just pay people money to kill people. That's bad. But when money falls in the hand of a righteous man, he starts doing something good with that, the same money. If you give me a million dollars right now, and you give somebody else who doesn't love God the same million dollars, the money is not the bad thing, it is who the money is in their hand. So say with me, I don't hate money. So with me, I respect money. <laughs> you see, no, I say that because what you attract what you respect. So with me, I attract, I attract what, I what I respect. If you despise money, it would not come to you. I'm just telling the truth. I'm telling you the honest truth. If I despise you, will you come to me? You're different. You'll be coming. Let me tell you. People will go to where they are celebrated, not where they are tolerated. You better learn not to go to where, oh, let's say she's coming now. 
Oh my gosh, here she comes. Oh, here she comes. Which one we want to go to? Yeah, here she comes. Oh gosh, here she comes. One place celebrates you, then that is like, oh my God. Delicia is here again. Versus, oh, see, now the same statement. Oh my God. Delicia is here again. Versus, oh my God, Delicia is here again. The same word, but said differently, mean different things. That is with money and everything in life. Did you get that? So I want us in Spirit Temple to also understand that's it. To also know that money also is spiritual. No, but so much to talk about that. Money is also spiritual. Money is not just a piece of paper that you just see. You know, money is also spiritual to the point whereby you attract, you can call money forth and money shows up in your life. I know we've not done this teaching, but we will do that one time. Where it's like they call money and money shows up. That was a call forth money. And money shows up. Now, I will just show you an example here. Somebody just came here and just blessed our church. This, she, she, she doesn't go to church here. She just came, asked the sister, I want an envelope. And she wrote her name and, the, and put an offering in it. She doesn't come yet. You get that? How does that happen? You think she would do that in any church in, in town? She doesn't come here. I don't, I've, I've never met this name before. She doesn't come here. But something, God spoke to her heart. She got upstairs. She asked her, she came here when church have not even started. I asked her for an envelope. She took the envelope, wrote her name, wrote her address, and put money inside. You get that? Why? Because we as believers, we are, that's a different teaching. Let me not go. I know you like to hear about money. <laughs> but we will talk about money at another time. Let's, God, I know you will love that teaching because we all, we all want to have money, don't you? <laughs> me too. But I'm blessed because you respect money by what you have in your pocket to begin with. If you don't treat what you have in your pocket well, you will not get any big thing in your pocket either. If you have one dollar, treat it well. Don't waste it. Everyone say, I love God. And money respects me. Because I also treat money right. <laughs> it's very important. These are some little things that you got to learn, you know, in life and in moving forward with God. But now we're talking about meekness. So money is something good on earth. So what else again that is good? Nice house. You say you love. She said, I love my house. I know. I know you like your house. That's why sometimes you're just staying in the house. <laughs> what else again do you like on earth here? The beach. Oh, she loves the beach. God help you. There's no beach in Allen Town. <laughs> you have to travel far to. You like car. You like it. You like cars. Amen. You love cars. What do you like on earth here? You don't know what she likes. Chicken and hair. You like it. So, so you have some things that you like on earth. So the Bible says that blessed are the meek for they shall inherit. You know what inherit means? What is inherit? What is inherit? Inherit. Becomes yours. Right? Who has everything on this earth? Who has it? God. So if God said, if you are meek, humble before me, Love what I love and hate what I hate. I will give you everything on this earth. And that includes what? Money. <laughs> Amen. So, and, and the Bible says, and what Jesus quoted is actually from the book of Psalm. You know, but let's look at Psalm 37 verse 11 as we talk more about meekness. Psalm 37 11. Psalm 37 11. Psalm 37, 11. If you are there, let me hear an amen. You say amen. You're not there. Are you there, Sister Kwanisha? You're there. Read for us, please. 37, 11. Yeah. 
You see that? The meek, he said, the meek shall inherit the earth and enjoy peace and prosperity. Is that the word of God? Do you believe God's word? It said, the meek shall inherit the earth and they shall enjoy abundance of peace and prosperity. They shall enjoy abundance of peace and prosperity. Let's look at Psalms chapter 25 verse 13. Yes, 25, 13. Somebody can read for us, please. <clears throat> the what? The sick? Okay. Descendants shall inherit the earth. Okay, let's go to the first chapter. Let's go to Psalm 22, verse 26. Psalm 22, verse 26. Psalm 22, 26. Someone. Amen. The, the meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord. Verse 24, verse 9 says, The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Verse Chapter 69, verse 32 says, The meek shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek him. Psalm 147, verse 6. The Lord lifts up the meek. He casts the wicked down to the ground. So to be meek is very important. If you really want to live life on this earth and enjoy God's kingdom on this earth, you have to be meek. Humility. You have to be humble. You don't have to claim your right because somebody offends you. Now you want to be mad at them and keep it in your heart. Don't sleep with the enemy. Many of us sleep with the enemy every night. You know who the enemy is? Who is the enemy? Yourself? No. You sleep with enemy. You sleep with anger. You sleep with unforgiveness. And the enemy is killing you. You sleep with resentment. You sleep with, 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 with bitterness. You laying down is laying with you. He wakes you up in the morning and, and reminds you what you forgot to think about the last night of what that person did to you. Then you are going to work. It reminds you again what that person said about you last evening at Bible studies. Then you decide to go to bed at night. He wants you to rehearse again. It's always with you. But that enemy you must defeat by the power of God. And it's you making a decision to allow the power of God to help you to be humble and to be, basically to be meek, to be humble towards God. Letting God know that you need him is a holy God. And when you have God, humility within you, then it is expressed out on the outside. It is God's purpose for you and I to inherit the earth, to have the good of the earth. Some people may not have the good of the earth, but they are not meek. So money and meekness does not always go together. Some could have no money, but they are very proud. And some could have money and not proud. So don't say, you know, if you are poor, that means you are meek. It has not to do with poverty. Meekness is a state of mind. Meekness is pride. I mean, meekness is the opposite of pride. And the Bible says that God would put down the, the prideful and he will raise up the humble. 
So if you want God to promote you, you want God to lift you up, you want God to take you from obscurity to prominence, then you have to be meek. You have to be humble. You have to humble yourself. Humble yourself before God. When you are that humble before God, it will translate into your everyday life. And people would know, see, that this is a humble woman, that is a humble man. And I told you before, humility has nothing to do with you allowing people to defile God. Because Jesus Christ was able to cast out all those money changers in the temple for doing what is wrong before God. Jesus did not talk back to those that were speaking bad against him. How many of you know that Jesus did not answer a word to all those that criticized him? How many of you know that? He never said a word to them. Let me ask you, will you be quiet when somebody is talking about you so bad? And talk, will you be quiet? Very hard. Very hard. But Jesus wants you to zip up and just trust him. Yes. You see, that is the teaching of Christ. <laughs> I know it's hard, but you can do it. Let them talk about you. Just don't defend yourself. And let God defend you. Just put it in God's hands. You know, because if we take this into our hands, it shows that we are proud now. You know, you, feel, you can't talk about me like that. I mean, who, who, who do you think? <laughs> you see? Who do you think? No, no. Do you know who I am? Do you know, do you know who I am? You're talking to me like that? You talk, I'm, I'm going to get you arrested right now. Do you know my connections? I know the mayor of Allentown. You know, that is pride kicking in. Who, do, do you know me? I can lock you up. I can get you fired now within a week. I, your boss, I, your boss, we are afraid. I'll get you fired by next week if you don't. See, that's pride. So meekness is not fighting your rights. I have to repeat that over and over again. Because many of us think meekness is just be humble but stand your ground. No. Meekness is humility before God and letting God have his way. You say, but pastor, are you saying I shouldn't fight for my right? You know, you, you say people should just, should just ride over me and do what they want to do. <laughs> no, you say, pastor, yes, just leave them alone. Just don't fight. If you need to fight at all, you fight against the spirit that is working in their life. Fight in the room. Deal with that demon, not the person. If she talks bad about me and she gossips me, which I know she would never do that, and you know, and she sees me coming, no, she would never do that. I trust her. She will not do that. How many of you trust her that she won't do that? If you trust her, let me hear you say amen. Oh, they trust you. <laughs> all right. See, I can pick on her. You know, what was I saying? You said what? Yes. Okay. So, what did I say before I said that? Let me see who's listening. You said what? Okay, so if she talks bad about me, if anybody talks bad about you, leave them alone. In Spirit Temple Bible Church, stop going after somebody because you heard somebody said something that said about you. You are just creating trouble for your life. Jade told John that Andrew messed up with Antonia. See, it does involve five people right there. That is trouble. Joel said, I'm not going to be a part of this and it's not me. That's meekness. I just use you. I know you are okay. I can use your name. You know. So we should really learn what Jesus is saying here is that we should be like him. The Bible said Jesus Christ was very meek. That means if your spouse says something wrong to you that you don't like, just keep quiet for those who are married. Just, just pray. Unfortunately, I am a So just pray. In 
instead of you trying to prove yourself and prove your right, just take it to God. Is that a hard teaching? Of course, that's different from what we've been taught, but that is the word of God. So as we study in the Beatitude, we're going to see a lot of things that we have to check our life with. We have to check our life. It may not really go well with us in the beginning, but that's really what Jesus expected of us. That's why he says to us, if somebody slap you on the left, what should you do? I said, oh my God, Jesus, did you just say that? <laughs> Tell me to slap them back. I'll give them what it, let me just give it to them. But Jesus Christ, if they slap you on this, say, please, slap this one. If you want to slap this one too, if you want to come slap, just, this is just Jesus is teaching us this for us to be different from the word. Not to be like the word. To be different. Because this is the way kingdom people live their life. And when we, if we all live like that, there will be so much peace in our homes. There will be peace in our church. There will be peace in our community. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 So that means, after this teaching, there will be so much peace in this church. Because everybody heard me now. There will be no more he says, she says. Now I, I'm upset with her now. She's praying. I'm not going to say amen because I don't like her. <laughs> Thank God this is not happening in this. But it happens in a lot of places. It happens. But thank God it's not happening here because but we have to talk about this now. God wants us to be humble. Don't be easily offended. Because offense is a blessing blocker. Offense will rob you of the blessings that God has promised you. The enemy will try to make you get offended, but just refuse. You know what? I'm not going to be offended at this. I'm going to just let it go and just trust God and let God deal with them. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus Christ said, you have heard, you should love your friends and hate your enemies. Jesus said, no, 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 I got it back. I want you to love your enemies. Don't hate them. See, it's just opposite. It's opposite. It's opposite. So if you really want to be a follower of Jesus, we have to do opposite of what the word does. We can't live like the word. Amen? Alright, we'll stop there. Any questions? I know this is, uh, this is some teaching tonight. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> Any questions? Hmm. <laughs> yes, please. Okay. Please, I'll get you the mic. We can only take three questions. My question is, how do you pray for that? Because you are definitely talking to me in a situation today. So I'm like, how do you pray for that? Because it's easy to do that right now when we're talking about it. When you're face to face with somebody, you know, it's harder. So what, how, like what kind of prayer would you suggest? Amen. Good question. Do not wait until you face the situation before you pray. You should be praying before. Say, God, I need your help. Help me, Lord, to have, to be meek, humble in my spirit. Remember, meekness is one of the fruit of the spirit. We'll get to that in the book of Galatians. Help me, O oh God. When you have prayed like that, and when you have read the Bible, and you have prayed, like that if you struggle in that area, you've prayed. When you are confronted with that situation, see, the Holy Spirit helps you. To not retaliate with words. So when somebody talks about you and talks bad about you and criticizes you and wants to make you respond back, you just keep quiet. By the time you are quiet, guess what? They will, make, they will even start feeling like they just made a fool of themselves. So, but you have to pray before. Say, God, give me a meek spirit. Give me, O oh God, the spirit of meekness like Christ. 
just to be meek in my heart and to have the gentle spirit, to be gen a gentle spirit, a gentle spirit. Help me, God. But I know I have tendency to, to flare out, and but God, help me. I want to be what your word says, a gentle spirit. So when you pray before all of this, when you come into such situation, and because you have already prayed, it becomes easy for you to deal with. Together. And then you feed yourself with the word of God. Because it is what you have on the inside that you can only produce from the outside. Produce out of you. And I, I, and I will give you an, an example of that. Brother Sion, come very far. Let me give, make an example of that. Brother Sion, come far. Let's say in Brother Sion. <clears throat> now, this is Brother Sion. Inside of Brother Sion, he has been praying for weeks that God should change him. He knows he's been doing some bad lifestyle. That God, and he's been praying God change me. And he, he's been hearing the word of God. And he's filled with God's word. He's filled with the word, the love of God. He's filled with the peace of God. So now, he encounter pressure from somebody. They pressure him by pressuring him. Like that. Is he hurting you? You have some big abs, strong abs here. <laughs> they pressure him. What if, if, if he has to throw up at all, what will come out of him is what is inside. If he has hatred in him, he will curse. If he has love with him, he will bless. You cannot give out what is not, what is not already in you. That's why you got to put in you the word of God every day. In a, every day, you can live that life. It's possible. Before the, you don't have to be a pastor to live like that. You can live a life, everything you hear, everything you see is God's word. So that when trial comes and pressure comes, what comes out of you is God because that is what you have inside of you. If you put in junk in you, when trouble comes and somebody squeezes you like I'm doing right now, what's going to come out of him will be what's already inside of him. So the answer is that beside prayer is feed yourself with the word of God. See God's word. Stop watching bad movies. That's for me. Maybe it's not for you. Because what you see every day is, you no, know, I am grown, I am mature, it doesn't affect me, I know how to control myself. You are lying. Because one day, what you saw that happened on that movie, it's going to happen to you, and you're going to respond exactly what you saw in that movie. Do you believe that? Yes. Exactly. You will respond. Because this mind is a computer. Our mind is a computer. Everything you see is stored in some compartments. It never goes. It's in there. You just have to be triggered by the same incidents for it to be released. So feed your mind, your spirit with God's word. Avoid watching anything that would mess up your thinking. Yeah, you, I tell you the truth, you have nothing to lose doing that. Except to have peace of mind. You go to bed peacefully, you are not afraid of having nightmares or, you know, you, just peace. Everyone say peace. Peace. Amen. Thank God bless you. Any other questions? Now, does that answer your question? Amen. Any other question? Give room for two more questions here. Yes, sister. Who, you, who else have question? You, okay, three. So, just, okay, no comment here, just questions. You, you have a question. Or is it a comment too? Question, okay. Can, can you go up so they can, they can hear you? Yes. Is it, maybe it's even off. Okay, you can get up though. Yes, okay. Amen. Okay, you can make it. Um, no, I was just wondering, like, so say if you're somebody who always in, like, getting negative feedback from, like, the same person all the time, and it just gets to the point where you're just tired of it, and you just don't know how to react to that person anymore, because all they do is, like, say negative stuff to you all the time. Yes. So. How, how do you deal with that? Did you hear what she said? There are people you in your life that constantly saying negative stuff about you, to you. Every day. 
If they are your spouse, you have to really go fasting and prayer because you can't run away from them. But if it's a friend, you can definitely cut them off. If, it is a, if it's a neighbor, you can really cut them off. If it is your boss, you just can't wait to get out of that place and not be in their presence. Or look for a job and look for another job that you don't have to deal with all that garbage. So you have choice to make, but you don't react to them. They can say negative things to you, negative stuff. You have a choice because I, you can be talking to me right now and it's negative and my mind is focused on something else. I'm not even hearing you. I just refuse to hear you. But I know it takes practice. I just refuse to hear. People call me on the phone, just talk, just go on and on. If I would just be thinking of something else because they won't hang up, they keep on running their mouth, and I'm tired of trying to get away, but they won't stop talking, but all they're saying is negative. I don't want to be rude. I just keep the phone, but I won't even hear what they're saying. Now, if they are face to face with you, you have to show also that you are not receiving what they are saying. You know, but if it is if it is a friend and that is the way they live their life, then just tell them, please, I can't deal with this kind of talk. If you're going to be around me next time, please don't talk like that because I can't deal with that. If they keep doing that, then you stop. You just start avoiding them. If they come in this way, you go that way, and that way you just keep your peace and keep your sanity because you cannot afford to mess up your heart. The Bible says. No, no, the Bible says, he said, protect your, your word. Because out of it are the issues of what? Life. Protect it. How do you protect your heart? Based on what you hear, what you see, and what comes in here. And look at me. They are fine there. Protect, they are fine there. Look at me. You're not even here. Look at me. They are fine there. Protect your heart. Because out of your heart are the issues of life. Issues of life. Anything in life comes out of here. How do you protect your heart? What you hear, what you see, and what goes in out of your mouth. So you protect your heart so well. So if what you are hearing is not helping in your heart, get away from that situation. Get away from that place because what you are hearing eventually would manifest in your life. If you sit, as you sit under this teaching, day in, day out, there's no way you can be in this church for more than three months that your life will not change. Somehow, something must happen because you keep hearing the same word, the same message. My message is the same. Nothing changed. The same message I preach every Wednesday, every Sunday. The same message. The love of God, the peace of God, healing of God. The same message. So, this is how it is. What you hear has to be to be to make sure that it's the right thing because it can affect your heart. Amen? Does that answer your question? Yeah, the last one. Did you have one? Or are you, are you just thinking? Okay. Last one? Alright. So, since all the questions are done, we have two comments. So, we're going to give you two minutes for your comment because I need to get everybody out of here by 8.30. Praise the Lord, saints. Y'all sleeping today? Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Amen. I have more of a testimony. I'm going to try to do it in two minutes, under two minutes. And I have to thank Sister Shalitha because she, she was uh, saw when I was being tried and tested. I may be a licensed minister, but I'm also human. When you cut me, I bleed red just like anybody else. I'm not better than anybody else. I'm a human just like anybody else. So yes, the devil is going to also test me too. And at my work, I was going through with my boss. He was just being very grueling and disrespectful to me, the way he talked to me. It wasn't what he said, it was how he said it. Like Pastor was saying earlier, you can say the same thing three different ways. It can be a positive or a negative, right? You were just saying that. You could say, oh my goodness, here, he, here she comes. Or you could say, here she comes. He yelled, his voice tone was off is what happened. I was humble. It was hard, was it easy? No. I was so upset, and I talked to Sister Patricia, because Sister Patricia keeps my little mic up for me. So when I get off work, I see her, and she says, how was your day? And I'm just like, oh, my heart is heavy. I'm human. He really hurt me the way he talked to me. But I didn't answer back, because first of all, he was turning red. And I'm not going to stand up there and go back and forth with somebody. I, I gave it to God, 
I prayed. Sister Shalitha said, here's some holy oil. Anoint your desk. I mean, I know about the holy oil, but I didn't have any. I had ran out. I was almost with tears in my eyes as a human being. But I have to remember, I have to also put God first. And she helped me remember that that day when she saw me with tears in my eyes talking to Sister Patricia. And she said, Mama, give her a hug. Sister Patricia gave me a hug. She's my mom away from home. My mom is in New Jersey, but they've been family to me and they've been good to me. And I want to say thank you, Jesus, that I was able to have family right here in Pennsylvania, although my, pa my parents are away, although the man tried to press me like Pastor S.A. just demonstrated. When you're getting pressure and they're waiting for you to react, you don't have to react because he made himself look silly in front of everybody else getting loud and turning red when nothing was happening. There was no reason for it. I waited a couple days, long story short. I went to him two days later and I let him know, this is how you made me feel. I didn't appreciate it. Going forward, I would appreciate it. If you have anything you want to say, say it respectfully. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't appreciate somebody talking to your mother like that or your sister. I'm somebody's mother and I'm also a lady. You don't talk to me like that. Mm -hmm. In the end, I shook his hand. And I said, you know what? As long as we understand each other, I have a respect for you, you have a respect for me. Everything is fine. I'm gonna shake your hand and it's over. We can move forward and have a clean sleep. Thanks be to God. And that's what I said. In the end, I threw a scripture at him. I said, the Bible said you must not go to bed with the sun at, at your back. You don't have strife with anybody. I don't care what happened. You don't have strife with nobody. He didn't want to hear it, but guess what? He listened and he smiled. I said, I, I was humble. I apologize to you, although I didn't really feel like I was wrong, but I know I'm a humble person. I'm a woman of God. I apologize if I offended you, being humble. I didn't get an apology from you, and I waited patiently. He said, I'm sorry. It was hard, but he said, I'm sorry in the end. Amen. 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 And even though he did not say he's sorry, even though, it, even though he never said it at all for the next 20 years, you still just your mind on God. Because some people would never say they are sorry. But that shouldn't bother you. Just say, well, God, I trust you. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> I'm just going to give you two quick, um, I guess, rules or suggestions that I gave my children when they were growing up that will help uh, some of you that may have problems that you were speaking about. My daughter came running in the house one day. She was about 12 years old at the time, and she said, Mommy, Mommy, this boy called me a hoe. So I asked her, I said, well, are you? She said, no. I said, well, then don't worry about it, okay? If you are what they say you are, if you're doing what they say you're doing, you still shouldn't have anything to say because then it's the truth. So either way, you shouldn't have to worry about it, shouldn't have to talk about it, shouldn't have anything to say about it. Amen. That's and one. Just one more thing. The other one is I taught my children, pray for your enemies. Hmm. And one um, very severe thing that happened is my son, uh, my oldest son, when he was, again, I think in high school, and um, he was surrounded by, he said it was about 10 or 11 boys, and they were holding a gun to his head. And I taught my children always to pray for your enemies. So they let him go, but one by one, the first one uh, was in Harrisburg, he got shot and killed. Another one got hit by a car. Another one um, got shot 11 times. He survived and eventually gave his life to Christ. But each one, eventually something happened to them. We didn't wish them bad. We just prayed for them. And, and, they were, and my son was taken care of. So Amen. those are the two things that I taught my children. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing. And as we close, I'll leave this thought with you. Blessed are those who are meek, for they shall inherit the earth. 
Humility before God. Humble yourself before God and seek his righteousness. Live a life of gentleness and humility because the spirit of God that lives in you is a gentle spirit. Don't be fooled by saying, no, I'm not gentle. That is not me. The Bible says you should be gentle. No, that is, you don't know me. I'm not, I'm hyper. No, you gentle. Just be speaking it to yourself. I have the spirit of Christ. The spirit of, the Holy Spirit is, the Bible calls him as a gentle spirit. So it lives in you. So let that gentle spirit of the Holy Spirit comes out in you. Amen? Amen. Say with me, I am gentle. I am gentle. Because the spirit of God lives in me. Let us rise and pray. Our Father, we thank you tonight for this study. We bless you, God, that you are grooming us, you are making us into who you want us to be, Lord. Lord, we know this teaching tonight might be hard for some of us. We pray that, Lord, you will give each, each and every one of us the grace to live by your word and that your, your word would transform our life and Chip out anything in us that is not right. Help us to go, even as we give tonight into the work of your kingdom, we pray that Lord will bless every hand that is given and let your blessing rest upon the, our lives. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.